Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to teach you how I paint frosty icy armor uh, for this Baron Guard here. So we start off with a white prime and then we're going to base coat with Pro Acryl Dark Blue. Any dark blue will do, but uh, this is the one that I prefer. Uh, after that's base coated, you're going to grab Vallejo Turquoise and you're going to aim this towards the edges of the armor. Uh, if you've seen our uh, molten armor tutorial it is similar to that if you haven't you should go check it out but the basic idea is that we want to keep that dark blue that we base coated in we want to keep that uh, still visible in the centers of the armor panels think of it like the the darkest part of the armor is like a deep part of a lake and as you go out uh, it gets lighter uh, then after that turquoise we're going to grab vallejo electric blue again you're going to be aiming towards the edges leaving that previous layer of turquoise showing in some areas don't worry too much about uh, overspray because you're gonna have to go back and black out the the armor on the uh excuse me the non-armor parts anyway so just be a little loose with it so this is what it should look like after that uh, electric blue then for the final airbrush part we're going to grab vallejo sunrise blue which is an even brighter lighter blue and same idea you want you want to make this even more minimal than the last layer leaving that electric blue still showing through in some areas uh, i like to focus this on the sharpest points right if the if that shoulder pad has four corners i like to focus it on some of those top facing corners then we're going to move on to the dry brush section and this is going to be one part gauss splash to green in that sunrise blue and you're going to dry brush the whole the whole model essentially um, Make sure you get all the edges, uh, and this is going to be an all-over dry brush. The next one is going to be a little bit more focused. Don't worry about getting a little bit of a frost color. We're going to end up uh, fixing that later on because we're going to be using some UV resin, and a lot of that's going to get that frostiness is going to get lost anyway. And honestly, it's you know, <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's a ice armor, so that chalkiness kind of just reads as frost anyway, so not a big deal. Right, once that's done, that's what you should have. Uh, and then you're going to grab uh, Vallejo Glacier Blue, which is an even lighter blue. Um, and again, like I said, you're going to dry brush essentially the whole model, but you really want to focus the focus it on the areas that were airbrushed that lightest color, right? You want to focus this on the very sharpest edges, on the tips of the armor, especially. And uh, if I haven't mentioned it already, if you enjoy these types of tutorials, these types of videos, we'd appreciate uh, like, subscribe, yada, 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 all that usual stuff. You know, got to say it, but uh, yeah, we appreciate it and it helps us out. All right. Uh, make sure you get the horns here, though. Like, um, I haven't been paying too much attention with the previous blues, but make sure you get this glacier blue on the horns. We are going to address those later on. And, and the back horns right here, I guess these metal armor spikes, whatever they are. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different with those at the end of the video, but you want to make sure those are basically white right now, at least. And uh, after that glacier blue, this is what you should be looking at, something like this. What we're going to do next is uh, we're going to reintroduce some of that blue back into the armor panels. So with a turquoise, a Vallejo turquoise, and a glaze medium, you want about that consistency. We're just going to, I get, yeah, do, do a glaze over all the insides of the armor panels because doing that dry brush um, kind of, you know, it spills over into the insides of the armor panels and it really lines everything up. So with this turquoise, we're reintroducing some of that uh, a blue back. What I like to do is I like to push the glaze into the edges, right? As you can see here, I like to end my brush strokes in the edges, excuse me brush strokes in the edges. I'm not swimming here. Um, anyway, once that's dry, we're going to move on to the UV resin part. So if you never use this stuff, uh, you're going to have to sacrifice a brush. Uh, I've not found a way to not destroy my brushes with this, but you're going to get some of that UV resin and you're going to 
cover all of the inside panels uh, that we just previously glazed with turquoise. Um, and this is a, the consistency is like a glue um, if you've never worked with it. Now the thing with UV resin is it does not set unless you um, use a UV torch or put it in the sun. So I don't know how many of you are painting by sunlight, but do not do that for this uh, if you're using UV resin because it'll start curing as soon as you uh, start applying it. So definitely don't sit by a window or anything like that. Make sure you're working under a lamp that isn't UV. Um, now it looks like you're having to do some precision here. It's actually pretty easy to work with. Uh, UV resin does not flow super easily. It's not going to run like water or anything. It's Like I said, it's like a glue almost. So just try to be careful and try and get in the insides of those uh, armor panels, leaving the trim alone. You can also do this in multiple layers. Uh, there you see me grabbing my UV torch uh, or UV flashlight and just uh, curing it. Uh, so yeah, apply it for a couple seconds and once that's done, it should be hardened. And what it does is it gives you this almost like depth almost like uh, like a layer of ice has been uh, applied over the, over the armor. Then what you're going to do is you're going to grab a sanding stick and a knife. Uh, I use scalpels, but a hobby knife would do. And you're just going to scratch up this armor, and it should look like um, almost like a frozen lake where people have you know, maybe been ice skating or something. But you know, maybe instead of ice skates, it's swords or branches, you know, riding through trees or something that's scratching the armor up. Uh, but you would want to do this again, it adds that depth that we're looking for uh, with these icy armor panels. And yeah, so you're going to do this for every single bit of UV resin. Also, you might notice the sword. Uh, I'm going to change it out later for one that I think fits better. Um, the one I switched it out for looks much more like uh, ice, like an ice sword. Um, but I'm doing the same thing to that sword as I'm doing here. I, I didn't record it. But you can see it there. Um, now we're going to grab Liquitex Prussian Blue, um, and we're going to add even more blue back into uh, over top these UV resin layers. This is essentially going to be the same as that turquoise layer, um, but with this dark Prussian Blue, it just adds that little bit of extra blue back, um, so we're not overwhelmed with uh, lighter sky blue colors. Um, again, this is what this does is add some nice depth back to that ice. Um, I like to focus it around the centers, right? So in the beginning, we talked about leaving the, the dark blue um, in the centers of the armor panels. This is basically reinforcing that with this glaze. Again, this is a glaze. I, I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, I like to create these like blue halos around these faces on its armor panel. So yeah, there you go. There you can see it up close. Uh, not quite as prominent on this side, but um, I'll actually show you. Um, one that has and one that doesn't. So right, that back one, the one on the right, has the blue halo of blue Prussian glaze. The one in the front doesn't. Uh, so, you know, preferences, if you don't like that look, you don't have to do it, but I do like that, adding that blue back in adds that depth. So uh, I go ahead and do it to all those armor panels. You can also do it to the shins, knee pads, so on and so forth. I do do some on his, I do it on pretty much every panel, um, just adding a bit of that blue back in. You can see it in the center uh, of his left shoulder pad right there. It's facing the camera right now. Um, it's a step that I think is worth it, um, but you know, if, if it's not to your taste, then, then don't bother, obviously. And right, now finishing up, I mentioned those bones before. We're gonna grab Turbo Dork Pearly Gates. Tur yeah, Turbo Dork Pearly Gates and um, just do a quick overbrush, dry brush over these uh, whitened bone pieces. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give them a little bit of shine, a little bit of shimmer. So they almost look like sparkling ice, uh, like icicles or something like that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, there you go, you can see it's that little bit of shine. Not, it's pretty subtle, but I like to focus it on these because you know, these horns, you know, they kind of already look like icicles, so. Pushing them that little bit farther is great. Uh, and then once you're done with that, you're done with the ice armor and you're gonna paint up the rest of the model. Uh, and that should leave you with something like this.
and yeah, there he is in all his icy gloriousness. Um, yeah, I think this turned out super awesome. I'm super happy with how it came out. Uh, he's definitely gunning for uh, the top spot for my favorite Varengar models that I've painted. Uh, I don't know, what do you think? If you've seen the Molten Varengar, what do you think? Do you think this guy or that guy? Um, I'll let you guys decide which is better. Anyway, just to wrap it up, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you did, you know, do the usual, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Also check out our streams, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.